If you have your Bibles, open them up to Mark chapter 2. I'm going to read our entire text that we're going to study together today. I hope you're ready to hear from God. Are you ready? Are you leaning in? Do you have a kingdom stance today? Are you open to hearing from God? Do you want to hear from God? All right, Mark chapter 2, if you open your heart to what God wants to say today, God's got a word for you today, church. You as an individual, God's got a word for you today. Mark chapter 2, beginning in verse 1. A few days later, when Jesus again entered into Capernaum, the people heard that he had come home. And they gathered in such large numbers that there was no room left, not even outside the door. And he preached the word to them. Now, when the word of God preaches the word, you know it's going to be good. I mean, Jesus was and is the word. And here he is, and he's preaching the word. And this is what I hope happens today, that God's word speaks, that God's word speaks to you. Only his word is able to judge and to push into your heart, into your situation. So I pray today as a result of our time together that we hear the word of God, that we hear a word from God. Now, he preached the word to them, verse 3, and some men came bringing to him a paralyzed man carried by four of them. Since they could not get him to Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof above Jesus by digging through it, and then they lowered the mat the man was lying on. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralyzed man, Son, your sins have forgiven. Now some teachers of the law were sitting there thinking to themselves, Why does this fellow talk like that? He's blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? And immediately, Jesus knew in his spirit that he was, that this was what they were thinking in their hearts. So Jesus is calling them out, even though they're not even verbalizing what it is they're thinking. So even this morning, Jesus knows what's in your heart. You don't have to cover it up and try to conceal it. He can, he can uh, handle your thoughts But he also knows your thoughts and he knows your hearts. And Jesus speaks to these these men who are, are students of the law. And he says, why are you thinking these things? Which is easier, to say to this paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up, take your mat, and walk. But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. And so he said to the man, get up, I tell you, take your mat and go home. And so he got up, he took his mat, and he walked out in full view of them all. And this amazed everyone. Y'all say everyone. Everyone. This amazed everyone, even the haters. This amazed everyone, and they praised God saying, we have never seen anything like this. This is a stunning story, and let's, let's look at it. Together, let's lean in to the word of God together. The title of my message is Courage to Find Another Way. Courage to Find Another Way. Someone needs to hear this today. You have been turned down and you are discouraged. You have been on your mat, paralyzed, stuck. And you don't see a way out. You you, you don't see a a way out in the foreseeable future. But it's, it's time to find the courage to find another way. The Bible says in Mark chapter 2, verse 3, that some men came. They came. They came bringing to him a paralyzed man. It speaks of the physical state of this man. But what we're going to learn in this story is that it it actually speaks also to the spiritual state of this man. Because not only was he paralyzed physically, but spiritually speaking, what you saw on the outside is also what was going on the inside. And they brought this paralyzed man carried by four of them. Now, let this play out in your mind's eye. I I can just see this. These these four men are great friends. And who knows? They could have been family. And they were very well acquainted with their friends, 
situation. And they had probably adapted to being his friend. Who knows? They may have been the guys who always carried him around. When he needed to go, where he needed to go, his friends would carry him. And just picture this and and consider the type of friends that this paralyzed man had. And I, I just wondered this morning what kind of people you have around you. Do you have the kind of friends who that when hope comes to town, you get them close to hope? When there's potential for the situation, for their circumstance to change, what kind of people do you have in your life? And I love that they haven't given up on him yet. This man has been paralyzed for years, very possibly his entire life he's been paralyzed. And again, they were faced with the reality of his situation. Every day, they would have had to help him get to where he was going. And again, they would have had adjusted. They would have always been adjusting. But they hadn't given up on him yet. They still held out hope. And some of us have friends who are paralyzed. They're paralyzed spiritually speaking. And what we see on the outside is symptomatic of what's really going on on the inside. And let me just speak to the people of God for just a few moments here. The people that you see in our culture and in our city who are struggling and wrestling with addictions, who are struggling in wrestling with things that just dominate them, people who have marriages that are unhealthy, uh, men and women who they, they, they can't control themselves, they, they're just swayed by whatever comes their way. Can I just encourage you to not get frustrated with them, but see that what's going on on the outside is symptomatic of what's going on on the inside. May we be the type of people that see people the way Jesus sees people. Come on, can we be the kind of friends that don't push our friends down, but can we be the kind of people that have courage to carry? Courage to carry. I'm just, I'm here to tell you today that your courage is not just for you. The last four weeks, God has been stirring us to be courageous students, courageous men, courageous women for the things of God, to take a stand, to be bold in our faith, to be bold in our marriages, to be bold in our schools. But listen to me, your courage is not just for you. God has done something in you, and God is doing something in you because he wants to do something through you. And I chose the chimpanzee today for our animal because the chimpanzee rolls in a troop. I've got a picture of a chimpanzee. Almost human-like, right? Kind of looks like Quinn. Look at that. He's got nothing on your beard, though, Quinn. Next picture, everybody get ready. Come on. Looks like Roman. Check him out. Little Roe hanging on the tree. So what's up? The next picture, two chimps hanging out. This is what I love about the chimpanzee. They carry each other. What you need to know about a chimp is they roll in what they call a troop. And you roll up on one chimp, you need to know that there's a troop behind them. And they always find another way. Uh, Chimpanzees are some of the smartest animals on the planet. That's why we send them to the moon, right? Uh, these, These animals have you know, like shown us that they have a a high level of of reasoning and problem solving. They have the ability to find another way. They carry their own. Go to the next one. They carry their own. Come on. 
literally on their back. And today, we, we've got to learn to be like a chimpanzee enrolling a troop. You see, if the people of God would get a kingdom stance, if the people of God would roll in a troop, instead of kicking people down, we'll find ourselves picking people up. Because we've got the numbers and we've got the confidence. For far too long, some of you have been living life alone. You've been handling life alone. You've been dealing with your situation alone. Only you and your husband know your struggles. And I understand that in your marriage you need privacy. But can I invite you to, to encourage you to get a troop? To get another couple or two couples and invite them in. And here's what you're going you're to discover. What they struggle with is what you struggle with. You're not the only one with issues. Can we take off the mask, church? Can we just be honest and real that we all have stuff and we're all processing through stuff. Your courage is not just for you. And courage does whatever it takes to get people to Jesus. Courage rolls out in a troop. Courage rolls out and looks for people that are down to pick them up. Courage looks for the broken. Courage looks for the paralyzed person. Courage looks with eyes open the situation of their culture and their city. Courage looks for the person in the family that's down. Courage looks for the husband that is rejected and struggling. What kind of friend are you? What kind of husband are you? What kind of wife are you? I want to challenge you today to have the courage to carry because your courage is not just for you. And what we see in this story is that God has placed people in our lives that we need to have courage for. Who is that person? Who are those people in your life that God has positioned you in close proximity to, that you would have courage for them. They need your courage. They've been on that mat too long. They've adjusted to being down. They can't imagine what it would be like to be on top of that addiction. They can't imagine what it would be like to not be constantly looking over their shoulder. They can't imagine what it would be like to find forgiveness and grace and love. They can't imagine what it would be like to walk courageously like you're walking. They need your courage. See, God uses us for others. Something happens in your walk with Jesus when you realize that, that God uses us for others. So, so don't be blinded by what appears to be keeping them down. Don't be discouraged by what seemingly has them paralyzed. Have courage for them. Imagine the potential. See, courage sees the best in people. Courage is hope-filled. Courage carries with hopeful expectation. Can you just see these boys carrying this paralyzed man through the streets? They had a kingdom stance about them. They were moving forward. They knew exactly where Jesus would be. And they carried their friend there with with a hopeful expectation. You see, this is what courage does. Courage picks up and it doesn't push down. Church, we've got to learn to pick up and not push down. We, we've got to stop killing our wounded. And we have to rush to carry. I wonder what kind of person you are 
to your friends. What an incredible demonstration of courage. And what if we could be the kind of friend who would have the courage to carry? Imagine the potential for that person in your workplace that you think is too far gone. Imagine for the potential of the person in your family, whether it's your husband, your wife, or one of your sons or daughters, maybe it's your uncle, maybe it's your grandpa, and you just think, man, they live long life too long. They've been on the mat too long. There's no way they'll ever change. I don't know about you, but I'm so grateful for the man who carried me to Jesus. And he didn't give up. He didn't look at the high school punk that I was. And so there's no way that kid would ever give his life to Jesus. You know what he did? He carried me with hopeful expectation. He loved me. He became a father figure to me in a home that was full of dysfunction. And he showed me just day by day by being there with me. He gave me hope. He showed me what love really looks like. What kind of friend of you are you to others? But, but also, I want you to consider this. What kind of friends do you have around you? Because write this down. Our friends are carrying us somewhere. Like, don't, don't ever lose sight of this. I think we have this idea that once we get past college, our friends stop having influence over us. It never changes. Show me your friends and I'll show you your future. The people closest to you influence you. So what you've got to be honest about is where are your friends carrying you? They're carrying you somewhere. So you better get a clue. You better ask yourself, when I'm with these friends, where do they carry me? Do they carry me back or do they carry me forward? Are they leading me to life or are they leading me to death? Are they pulling me down? Or are they picking me up? Are they spurring me on? Or are they telling me to slow my roll? I was talking to one of our students and Vox students. Our, our Vox students is our student ministry meets every Tuesday night. Shout out to our 6th through 12th graders. And I was talking to one of our students, and they were just telling me about the struggle that they have. Because this student particularly is new to his walk with Jesus, and he was just telling me, Pace, it's hard for me when I'm around certain friends because they don't know what is going on inside of me. They don't know the change that I'm, experience, I'm experiencing. And he, just, he was just honest. He's like, it's so hard when I'm around them. It's so hard when I'm with them on the weekend. It's just so easy for me to be pulled down. And adults, we're the same. This never changes. In our student ministries right now, we're in a series called Woke. And it's really about wisdom. It's about helping our stu students learn to make wise decisions. When you make a decision, you don't ask, you know, what do my friends think about this? What are my friends doing? How is this going to make me look? How is this going to make me feel? Wrong question. The question we should ask is, is this the wise thing to do? That's why we're saying, get woke. Get wise, get woke. And in Proverbs, it says, walk with the wise, and you will grow wise. But a companion of fools suffers harm. Who's your troop? Who are your friends? Adults, who are the people in your life? I'm not saying you push people in your life that are far from God out of your life, but what I am saying to you today is the people in your life that are closest to you, they are carrying you somewhere. So make sure that the people closest to you have the same passion, the same faith perspective as you have. Are you woke? Are you being wise in your relationships? Who are your closest friends? Just think about it. It's real easy. Just do this quick friend inventory. Just ask yourself, when I'm with him, when I'm with her, when I'm with them, do they push me down on the mat? When I'm with them, am I more tempted? 
and pulled away and enticed to walk away from the things of God? Or when I'm around them, and I'm, am I encouraged? Do I feel like I'm rolling with some like-minded people? I'm telling you, the people around you, it matters. And we see in this story that this paralyzed man had great friends. He had friends who had the courage to carry him. Mark 2, verse 4, since they could not get him to Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof, just above Jesus by digging through it and lowered the mat with the man that was lying on. This is where the story gets good. This is where you begin to see some tenacity. This is where you see that they have courage to find another way. They find another way. So, so just picture it in your mind's eye. They, they show up on the scene. The house is jam-packed. Bouncers are turning people away. You can't come in. They're out the door. Windows are open. They try to get close to a window. There's no, I mean, they are rolling deep in this house. They're spilling out to the street. And so they're, they're met first by, by disappointment. And this is where most of us, if we're just honest, this is where most of us would just throw in the towel and say, I quit. Well, God didn't open that door. Come on, we say that too much as Christ's followers. God didn't open that door. Listen, these boys showed up and were turned away. There was no door. They found another way. Now, I'm convinced that at least one of these guys was a good old boy. At least one of them, okay? Because you see, I can just picture it. They kind of call the, the boys over and say, come here, come here, fellas. Which is what you need to know about good old boys. Whenever they're up to something, they always pull you away. They're like, hey, man. Trust me. Hey, hey man. And they got the other three together, and he says, we're not getting in there tonight, boys, but re, re, reck and wonder if reck and wonder if we could get on the roof. And uh, what if we could uh, what if we could cut a hole in that there roof? And then and then are y'all with me, boys? And then we'll lower them down. Wreck and wonder, that's a plan. <laughs> and, and these other boys are like, I reckon wonder it is. Let's go. <laughs> and they're down. They're down. And so they, they get onto the top of the roof, and they cut a hole in the roof. Come on, sometimes you just got to do some stuff. I mean, good old boy. Plus, a little bit of courage can get some stuff done, okay? Can get some duff stuff done. And they get this guy on the roof. They cut a hole in the roof. And sometimes the reason you can't get into the front door is because God is calling you to go higher. Yeah, yeah, sometimes you get turned out at the front door because God wants to see you have the courage to find another way. Could it be that the, the, the reason you've been turned out is because it's a testing of your faith? Could it be that the disappointment that you're facing is not something that's meant to knock you down, but meant to set you up? Don't give up, go up. Yeah, yeah, that's what God wants to say to you today. Don't give up, go up. Find a new way. Come on, get some good old boy ingenuity in you. Better to come to Jesus through the roof than to not come to Jesus at all. Better to come to Jesus lower down on a mat through the roof than to just be laid out in life. These are the kind of friends I want. I don't know about y'all. These are the kind of friends I want, and this is the kind of friend that I want to be. They go up, they make another way. And sometimes the best thing that can happen to you is a door is shut. The door's shut. That door's not 
available. What keeps you? What keeps you from having this kind of courage for your friends? Let's just, let's just talk for a minute. Like, like let's, just, let's just be honest. You and I having coffee, and we're saying about you and a friend in your life that's paralyzed. What's keeping you from finding another way? You might, you might say to me, I, as long as I've known her, she's been this way. You, you have no idea how deep she is in. You have no idea what this girl has experienced. She has such a hard heart. And you might say, I can't, I can't imagine. I can't imagine her ever giving her life to Jesus. I can't imagine him ever not abusing alcohol. I can't imagine it. God is calling you today to begin to imagine it. Your courage is not just for you. You know, I understand. I've got friends in my life. And outside speaking, they're the last people in this city that you would ever think would find themselves rescued and united in Jesus. But you know what? I'm holding out hope. I'm holding out hope. I want to lean in with hopeful expectation. I want to be the kind of friend that carries. And where do they find it? Like, this entire series has been about courage. And I've been rallying you in almost every, I mean, we had 42 people give their lives to Jesus last week. We had over 100 people, many of you, who just said, yes, I'm, I'm going to fix my focus, and I'm leaning forward. Like, we've had some rally moments in this series where we're saying we're going to be courageous, but if you're honest, some of you are going, I think my courage is going to run out, so where do I find more? Two months from now, three days from now, it's funny, Pace, I, I, I leave on Sunday and I feel courageous, and I'm able to make the right decisions at least for the next eight hours. But something starts to happen, and, and I lose my courage, and, and I find myself struggling with the same things, and I find myself back on my heels and, and backing down. Where do I find the courage? I think we can find it in how Jesus responds to these good old boys who have cut a hole in a roof, and they've lowered their friend in close proximity to Jesus. In verse 5, when Jesus saw their faith, their faith. He said to the paralyzed man, Jesus saw their faith, but said to the paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven. Jesus saw their faith and said to the paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven. Jesus saw their faith, not the paralyzed man's faith. Jesus saw their faith, but shifted his attention to the paralyzed man and said their faith because of their faith, your sins are forgiven. Where did these boys find the courage to be a carrier for the paralyzed men? Because of their Because of their faith. Jesus responds to their faith. Faith produces courage for Jesus. Faith produces courage for Jesus. There's not some magic dust that's going to come over you and give you courage. You're not going to meditate yourself into some zen-like state to get courage. Faith produces courage. And what is faith? What is faith? Well, we see it in this story. Faith is something you can see in response to something you cannot see. The Bible puts it this way. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So it's something that you can see in response to, hope, to a hope that you can't see. So these boys had a hope inside of them, a faith inside of them, and the faith was 
exercised in an action. Faith is what gives you courage. Listen, if you will hope and believe in Jesus for your friend, you'll have the courage. If you'll put your faith in Jesus and say, Jesus, I have no idea how I'm getting off this mat, and I have no idea how you're going to rescue this marriage, and Jesus, I, but I believe. I put my faith in you. I believe you are able. And then you're going to come one day to a point where you feel like, well, God didn't open that door. Find another way. Find another way. I'm just discouraged. My husband's never going to change. I'll never get him to church. I'm just discouraged. My son is living like hell. I have no idea where he is half the time. I'm just, I'm just scared to death, and I'm discouraged. You're like these boys who've walked up and got turned away. Find another way. How? How? Faith. Jesus just wants to be believed. How simple is that? Jesus said, if you would have the faith, even the size of a mustard seed, you could say to that mountain, be gone, and it would have to move. Just a little bit of faith will raise the roof for your friends. Come on. Jesus just wants to be believed. And our faith in Jesus produces a courage in us that moves us in action. Mark talks of faith four times in his account. Now, Mark, who is not a disciple, is writing down what Peter, who was a disciple, encountered. And Mark is wanting people to know exactly what Peter saw and experienced. Most scholars believe that this house was Peter's house. It's funny if you read Matthew's account, Matthew doesn't even talk about the roof being raised because it ain't Matthew's house. <laughs> Peter remembers when the drywall started falling. Right? And he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, put this in there. Put this in there, right? Put this in there. And they have faith. They, they, have, they have faith. Jesus saw their faith. You know what they didn't do? They didn't stand outside the door and sing a song to Jesus. In this moment, they didn't even sit outside the door and just say, Jesus, we have faith. Nope. Their faith gave them courage. Their courage gave them hope-filled ingenuity. And they found another way. Ha! Huh. What would happen? What would happen in our city if we were these kind of friends? What would happen in our families if we were these kinds of friends. Courage is faith in action. That, that's, that's the point of this whole series. Courage is faith in action. Their boldness was a result of their confidence of faith. Their ingenuity was a result of the confidence of their faith. So faith produces courage. You have faith. Show me a faithful man, I'll show you a courageous man. Show me a man who has faith and believes that anything's impossible, and I'll show you a man who is bold. Show me a woman who's holding all out all hope for her husband, and I'll show you a woman who's able to put a smile on even in the most difficult times. And I'll show you a woman who's stronger than steel, who carries herself with grace and splendor, who's able to love a, a, a husband who sometimes is unlovable. You know why? Faith. Faith in Jesus. Church, do you need courage? Find your faith. You need to get off the mat? Find your faith. How are you going to see your, over, your addiction overcome? Find your faith. How will you get off the mat that has held you down for all these years? Find your faith. And I love what Jesus calls this man to do. Jesus says, get up. And he got up. Don't miss that. 
Now this is faith in action. You see, the friends can only take the paralyzed man so far. They're up there. He's down on the floor in front of Jesus. And now Jesus, because of their faith, says to the man, your, son, your sins are forgiven. Now this probably messed with the friends for a few moments. They're probably thinking like, did he say he was healed? Because we brought him here for that. <laughs> you know? That good old boy up there is probably like, hey, man. So I guess a good old boy. <laughs> hey, man. And you see three times that what God is wanting to do this day there was an obstacle. The door's the first. They find another way. The roof is the second. They find another way. The disbelief of the religious people that day, they find another way. Listen, religious people lose sight of people. These men that were supposed to be students of the law, they have the word with them. They have faith in action being lowered down in front of them. And what are they focused on? You don't have the right to do that. You see, you know what religion does? Religious focuses on rules and law. But Jesus forgives. Listen, grace cannot be restrained by human narrowness. Grace says, get up. Grace says, I'll come to you. Grace says, I'll carry you. Grace reaches down. You stay around this church long enough, you're going to be doing one of two things. You're either getting up or you're already up because we're going to invite you off the mat. We're going to give you a hand. We're going to get you close to Jesus. And so Jesus, in closing, he comes to this man. He sees him, and he says, your sins are forgiving. You know, what happens in your life when what you think you want, Jesus pushes by, and he actually gives you what you need? This man thought all he wanted was to be healed physically. But Jesus bypasses what he wants and gives him what? He needs. But now it's, it's funny because one of these things that was actually uh, a closed door, something that was going to try to keep God from doing what he was going to do today, the disbelief of these religious people, it's their lack of faith that actually sets these people or sets Jesus into motion to, to heal the man's paralyzed legs. Because just look at it. What, is, what, is, what does Jesus say? This is so interesting to me. He says, why are you thinking these things? Which is easier to say this paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up, take your mat, and walk? Here it is, verse 10. Look at this. He's not talking to the paralyzed man here. He says, but I want you to know. I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive their sins. So he said to the man, I tell you, get up, take your mat, go home. And he got up, he took his mat, and he walked out. So faith, it produces courage, and courage leads to obedience. God calls this man to do something he's never done before. He's calling this man to put weight on on the muscle and bones that have never felt weight. Can you imagine the mental gymnastics this man was having to go through in this moment? Can you imagine the disbelief? But Jesus says, get up. And he gets up, and the thing that he was carried in on, he walked out with. And the door that turned him away, he walked through. But he says, get up and walk. Stand to your feet just for a few moments.
He says, get up and walk. Get up, get up, get up and walk. You got to walk it out. That's a word for someone today. You got to walk it out. There's some of you here, you've given your lives to Jesus. You've given your hearts to Jesus, but you're still on your mat. And all the power, the resurrection power, the same power that raised Christ from the dead is in you. Jesus says, get up and walk. Stand and walk. It's time for you to be courageous. It's time for you to dream the impossible. It's time for you to walk and be the man of God that God knows you are. It's time for you to see yourself as healed. It's time for you to not see yourself as a man or a woman paralyzed laying on a mat. You're a child of God, son and daughter of the king. Get up and walk. Walk it out. Have the courage to walk. Have the courage to walk.